Welcome to today's webcast in which we will be looking at Tableau and Microsoft BI. This webcast has been inspired by the fact that many of our clients have been successfully using the combination of Tableau and Microsoft technology for a variety of reasons. In today's webcast, we are going to look at three use case examples of how Tableau and Microsoft can be a powerful pairing. My name is Allie Hogan, and I'm a business intelligence and analytics consultant at Thoroughgood. I have my colleague Alistair Jones with me as well. Our contact information is on the screen. Please reach out with any comments or questions. Now, I will start with a quick overview of Thoroughgood for those of you who are not familiar with us. We are a specialist business intelligence and analytics consultancy, and one of our key values is our customer focus. We ensure that we aren't just working with our clients on technical solutions, but have a firm understanding of their business in order to ensure that we can align our business understanding with the technical possibilities that will, will result in optimal BI solutions. We are a global company with offices in London, New York, Philadelphia, and Bangalore. All of our consultants and all of our offices are recruited and trained in the same way such that we maximize the intersection of business understanding, technical excellence, and analytic ability. We are independent in that we don't work with one specific technology. We partner with many of the key players in the BI market shown on this slide, including the platform offerings like Microsoft and IBM across the top of the screen, the front-end specialists like Tableau and Click in the middle, and the niche players like Anaplan and Salesforce shown along the bottom row. With respect to Microsoft, we have been a Microsoft Gold partner for over 10 years and are currently a Gold certified partner for data analytics and BI solutions, data platform, and intelligence systems. As a partner, we are invited to be a part of Microsoft's Global Business Intelligence and Advanced Analytics Partner Advisory Council and are an active participant in some of the programs listed on the screen. With regards to Tableau, we are currently a strategic alliance partner and we're the Tableau Alliance Partner of the Year for the EMEA region in 2014. We are also a member of their Partner Advocacy Board and have a wealth of experience in using Tableau across our company. Today, we are going to be looking at integrating Tableau with Microsoft, but we also have experience integrating it with the other technologies shown. Finally, this slide shows some of the clients we have worked with in the key industries in which we focus. We have worked with many of these clients for a number of years, some even since Thoroughgood began some 25 years ago, and have a lot of pride in our relationships with these clients. To dive into some of the details, I'll start with an overview of Tableau and Microsoft. First, as a software, Tableau has a number of offerings. Today, we will showcase Tableau Desktop a powerful analytic tool used to explore data by creating visualizations and dashboards. In addition, we'll show Tableau Server, which is the platform for sharing and collaborating with Tableau dashboards in a secure environment. As a partner, we are participating in the Tableau 10 beta program and we'll give you a preview to the desktop and server components during the webcast today. On the Microsoft side, there are a wide variety of tools offered, which are organized into three categories. From productivity and collaboration tools, such as Office and SharePoint, to the SQL Server platform, to services through Windows Azure, Microsoft has established itself as a leader in the BI technology. Today, we will be focusing on the ones highlighted on the screen using the latest release of SQL 16. We have additional events surrounding the latest updates to Microsoft and Tableau, including a SQL 16 workshop being held in the U.S. in a few weeks. If you're interested, please see our website for more information. As a reminder, please use the chat pane if you have any questions throughout today's event. In this webcast, we'll discuss three use cases for utilizing both Microsoft and Tableau technology. First, Microsoft's data platform and semantic model integrates nicely with Tableau's visualizations and data connection components. Second, we'll show how Microsoft's data platform can scale 
with Tableau's server components for more options for performance tuning and optimization. Finally, we'll demonstrate how to define one version of the truth for use with both Microsoft and Tableau front-end data visualization tools. I'll now pass this along to Alistair, who will begin to showcase an example of visualizing robust end-user models using Microsoft and Tableau. Thanks, Sally. So the first topic we'll cover today is building visualizations on top of robust end-user models. So first of all, what is end-user modeling and what's its purpose? Well, end-user modeling is the ability of a business analyst or user to store, model, and analyze data within a structured data model at a smaller scale than an enterprise data warehouse. So the need for uh, end-user model modeling arises from data that isn't necessarily captured in a central data warehouse, but is useful to, re to retain and needed for analysis. Perhaps this data is specific and only relevant to a certain segment of the business. This could be new data that is yet to be added to a data warehouse or it could be supplemental data a user thinks may be valuable, but that value has still yet to be proven. So looking at a few specific customer examples of types of data that may require end user modeling, it could be mapping employees to a certain factory and that list is defined locally and changes often, or perhaps it's a hierarchy such as linking insurance brokers or retail stores to a certain city or state within your specific country. Maybe it's, use, it's new data that has yet to be integrated into the data warehouse or perhaps it's comparative market data of health insurance costs that has been acquired but isn't planned to be added to the central data store. So here is an example of an end user modeling process utilizing Microsoft Excel and Tableau. And this is the process we'll be demonstrating today. So data is first extracted, transformed, and loaded from a data source via Excel's ETL tool, Power Query. This data is then loaded into a Power Pivot data model contained within Excel. And finally, a data connection is established within Tableau to that Power Pivot model, and users can build visualizations and dashboards on top of that data. So now let's take a look at data modeling in action during a demo. Today we'll be looking at data for a fictional soup company, and I'll be a business analyst who is seeking to augment and supplement this data model and use it to gain certain insights on how our sales, our sales team are doing by Tableau visualizations. So first of all, um, I'll just start with Tableau Desktop. So this is Tableau Desktop 10, the latest version of Tableau, which is currently in beta and due to be released later this year. As you can see here, um, Tableau is able to connect to a number of different data sources. And a strength of Tableau is the sheer number of different data sources it's able to integrate with. In this example, I'm going to connect to a Microsoft Power Pivot model I've created. Now Microsoft Power Pivot is a user-based data modeling tool that exists within Excel. Power Pivot sh first shipped with SQL Server 2008 R2 and served as the precursor to SQL Server Analysis Services tabular models. And it's been available in Excel since May 2010. So now I'm going to open a Tableau workbook that's already connected to a um, Power Pivot model. So this is Tableau Desktop's default interface that appears once a connection to a data model is established. On the left here, I have data elements stemming from the Power Pivot model. And as you can see, no data has been loaded into the Tableau worksheet. But with the current live connection to the data model, when I do interact with the data, it'll send queries back to Power Pivot at runtime. I can make alter alterations or additions to the data being sourced from the model within Tableau. For example, I may know that this calendar month field is a date field. So I can update it to be a date field in Tableau. And the metadata within the Tableau connection will be updated. I can also create new measures uh, and dimensions based on the data that currently exists. So for example, all of my soup data is currently in GBP in pounds. Uh, and, and say a US division of the company wants a sense of our sales in dollars, I'm able to quickly create a calculated field, I'll call it USD sales, using that uh, GBP figure if I have an idea of the current exchange rate, which I know has been fluctuating a lot recently. So a core strength of Tableau is its ability to create a number of different visualizations on the fly. So for, for example, a sales manager has asked me to take a look at some of our best performing stores in terms of sales. So I'm going to create a scatter plot chart to investigate this using our two primary measures from this data model, sales and year-over-year -year change in sales. 
So first I'll drag sales onto my rows. I'm going to drag uh, percent change year over year onto my columns. And I want to view this by stores to see which of my stores are performing well. So I'll drag this onto the um, chart here. I'd, I'd like it to be labeled so that I can see uh, which of my stores each of these data points are um, quite clearly. So I, I drag that onto the labels there. And I know that we sell three distinct brands of soup at these various stores. So it'd be nice to see which of these stores are selling which type of soup. So I'll drag my brand onto color. And quickly, I've got a scatter plot here um, that shows sales uh, and growth in sales by store and by brand. So as you can see here, we have a few outliers. So some stores are doing very well in terms of sales, but no growth. Some, some stores that are growing, but still small in terms of absolute sales volume. And some that are doing a lot of sales and growth, uh, such as this Tesco up here. But now I, I only really want to look at uh, these data points here. I'll, I'll exclude the outliers by keeping only. Um, and, I'll begin to see, and I can begin to see more information on how the majority of my stores are doing. Um, so, for example, I can see that some of my stores selling Ealing Springs have low sales volume at present, but seem to be growing very rapidly. I can also begin to identify those stores that account for a lot of my sales, but are seemingly shrinking year over year. Finally, if I navigate to the analytics pane, I can dra drag on an average line. So I can see now my average sales and average growth and clearly uh, demark which of my stores kind of fall below par in either or both of these areas. So this is one visualization, or in Tableau terms, one worksheet. Creating a dashboard in Tableau is as simple as compiling a collection of these worksheets onto one page, and then functionality like filtering will apply across everything contained within the dashboard. So while a view of store performance is useful, I'd also like to, get a, like to get a feel of how our regional sales team is contributing to the overall success of the business. And there's really recently been a reorganization of the company within the sales team. We're interested in seeing how each of our individual salespeople are performing. The sales organization has only recently been restructured, and at the moment I don't have this information in my underlying data model, but I, I do have this information stored locally in a spreadsheet that's been sent to me by the head of sales. So we'd like to get a view, in a map if possible, of how these salespeople are performing. So first of all, I'll navigate to Excel. And uh, this is the Excel workbook that currently contains the Power Pivot model um, that I was just building a Tableau visualization on top of. And as you can see, it's seemingly an empty spreadsheet. So I'm using Excel 2016, which has a few new updated features to Power Query and Power Pivot tools I'll be showcasing today. But to uh, access the Power Pivot model, I'll click on the Power Pivot ribbon here and click manage to launch my power pivot model. And as you can see here, this is just a diagram view of the data model that I was using earlier. So this power pivot model could either be self-built and contained locally for my personal consumption and report building, or a power pivot model in an Excel workbook could be shared more widely within your organization. So I'm interested in adding uh, account manager information to this data model for analysis. And as I said, I've received this as a flat file. Um, so I'm going to use the Power Query tool to bring this data into this spreadsheet. So the first step would be bringing it into this workbook and then integrating it into the Power Pivot model. So Power Query is a basic extract, transform, load, or ETL tool that can be used to bring data into Excel from a variety of sources, such as Excel files, SQL Server Relational and Analysis Services databases, and the internet amongst other places. So to get a sense of the number of different data sources you can use, I'll just showcase them here. But in today's example, I'm bringing it in from a flat file, so from a workbook, and it's this sales regions workbook here. So I'll click import, and Power Query will launch, um, and I need to navigate to sheet one. I know that that's where my data is stored. So I can see here that the data that I currently have is, is rather untidy. Um, there are elements I do and don't need from it, and I'd like to clean it up before, um, before adding it to my data model. And that's quite simple to do in Power Query. So I'll hit Edit here, and I, be I can begin to transform this data in some ways. So, for example, I may know that um, I don't need anything after the comma here. I just want the first name. 
So I'll split this col column by delimiter, and the delimiter here is a comma, and I'll separate this column into two and remove the second column that is created. I'll tidy up the name here and rename it as account manager as it was. I know that I probably don't need this 10-year information uh, to view my kind of account managers by region, so I'll delete this, but I do have a specific, we do in, within our company have a specific way of referring to uh, sales regions within countries. We want to know that information. And uh, we have stores in England and we have stores in Scotland. Um, so one of the new features in Power Query 2016 is the ability to create conditional columns. So what I'm going to do here is create a conditional column on top of this. Um, and I'm going to call the column country. And I know that if the county is Aberdeen, then it's Scotland. I don't know if the county is Glasgow, then the country is Scotland. Otherwise, my country is England. So I'll add that column, um, and uh, you can see that there are a couple of records there for Scotland. So that's how you can quickly add a conditional column um, in, in Power Query 2016. I want to rename this uh, table that I'll be adding to soup account managers, and I will load it into my spreadsheet. As you can see here, it pops up as a neatly formatted table. So now the next step uh, will be loading this into my Power Pivot model, and that's as simple as going back to that Power Pivot ribbon and adding to my data model. So I'll navigate back to the diagram view, and I want to make a relationship on a column that I, I know they have the two of the tables have in common. And in this case, uh, I will be matching the county column here to the county column in the store table. So that's uh, quite a quick view of how you can add data to a Power Pivot model and load it from via Power Query. So I've refreshed my connection in Excel, and I have a uh, sorry in Tableau, and I have a Tableau workbook that's connected uh, and has now that account managers table uh, included. So kind of my, uh, my goal here is to get a quick view of how um, my sales managers are performing on a map. So what I'll do here is I'll drag county on and Tableau will automatically kind of recognize using the longitude and the latitude of the data points that it is uh, a map that I'm building, and it'll visualize that quickly on a map of the UK. Um, and the two measures that I'd like to see again are uh, sales. So the size now of the relative circles uh, is the, uh, the volume of the sales that I'm doing. But I'd also like to see uh, them colored by the year-over-year -year growth. I'm going to change that color to a kind of a more straightforward red-green diverging uh, more obvious. So I can see, and, and I can bring that account manager information alongside and label those data points for my account managers. And I can quickly get a view for uh, simple facts. So I can see that, for example, a top performer is Rachel and another top performer is Akila, and they would be useful to have perhaps at a sales meeting speak about why they uh, have been relatively successful this year, what strategies they've undertaken. I can see that in this kind of middle of, of England region here that I have a couple of uh, account managers that are performing pretty poorly, and then amongst them is one that's uh, performing very well. So again, perhaps we could do some further investigation into um, those, those patterns within my data and why that's happening. So I've quickly shown you how to rapidly um, kind of visualize data in Tableau, how to use Power Pivot to create and maintain data models in Excel, and then the capabilities of Power Query to integrate data from a variety of data sources. Both of these tools can be used by a more advanced business users, such as an analyst, to increase what they can achieve themselves without having to call on IT. So we've looked at an individual advanced use case of Tableau. I'll now showcase how Tableau can be used to develop, share, and collaborate at an enterprise level. So the two products we'll be discussing and showcasing for this portion of the webcast are Microsoft SQL Server and, Microsoft and Tableau Server. So Microsoft SQL Server is a relational database management system. 
It includes tools that enable users to clean and load data into a database, ensure data is consistent, store the data in an ordered manner, and uh, model this data for analysis. Tableau Server is an online solution for sharing, distributing, and collaborating on content created in Tableau. It contains security features, collaboration capabilities, the ability to personalize user experience, the ability to distribute on mobile, search capabilities, and it's performant and efficient. We commonly see products used across large companies in this way. So Microsoft SQL Server provides a kind of scalable performant backend data platform with SQL Server integration services providing a robust data integration, SQL Server storing the data and providing an enterprise level data warehouse, and potentially SQL Server analysis services to further model and analyze data. This data then feeds into Tableau Server where ad hoc Tableau dashboards can be created by end users or formatted reports can be stored, accessed, shared, downloaded by users, both via computers or mobile devices. So here's a view of what a data architecture might look like utilizing the Microsoft Data Platform and Tableau in combination. So data exists in various source systems and is then consolidated into the SQL Server uh, database engine after undergoing ETL via SQL Server Integration Services, or SSIS, which also ensures data integrity and consistency. This data may then be modeled, um, and that would be done in SQL Server Analysis Services, which also allows for the creation of hierarchies, calculated measures, and security to be implemented. Reports can then be created in Tableau or Microsoft Excel, connected to the uh, relational databases or to the Analysis Services databases, and these reports can then be shared with a wider audience within the business via Microsoft SharePoint, where Excel reports can be stored and Tableau reports can be embedded. Tableau dashboards are optimized to be distributed via Tableau Server, which we'll be showcasing shortly. But first, I'm gonna go uh, into a little bit more detail about how Tableau Server is organized. So in a few moments, I'll navigate to a URL that will take me to Tableau Server. It's set up such that a business's Tableau Server contains distinct sites users can access that store various reports and data sources. This is the highest level of organization of Tableau Server, and a site is usually specific to a department or region, for example, supply chain, finance, or Asia Pacific. An administrator can control which site users can see or access. Within each high-level site are various projects. A project is a subset of the site and stores uh, Tableau workbooks that are related, for example, supply chain ad hoc or European claims. Workbooks are Tableau files that contain a dashboard or dashboards and are built on top of data sources. Uh, data sources such as connections to a SQL Server uh, relational database or analysis services models are stored within projects. And a subsect of workbooks are the views. The views are kind of the individual dashboards um, contained within each uh, workbook. So this will kind of make a bit more sense when I showcase Tableau Server in a moment and walk through each level of that content hierarchy. So let's have a look at Tableau Server using my data from the Microsoft Data Platform. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm a finance manager at, insurance, at an insurance company who's interested in getting a quick view of lost data. So as I mentioned, uh, I access Tableau Server by navigating to a simple URL in a web browser, as you can see here. This is Tableau Server 10, which is also still in its beta phase and set to be released later this year. Notice to the top right-hand corner that I am signed into my own unique profile. This allows Tableau Server to track which users are making changes and enhances collaboration features as we will see, but also lets me alter my content, my account settings, and my start page. Tableau Server utilizes single sign-on and passes my Windows credentials to log me onto the server rather than me typing in separate credentials. This single sign-on functionality can be turned on or off. So now let's take uh, a look at the content hierarchy kind of in action and see how it's structured. So as I mentioned, the highest level of the content hierarchy is the site. Um, I'm currently in the underwriting analytics site, but we have other sites um, as part of this Tableau service, so the human resources department has its own site. The next level of the content hierarchy is the project level. So I'll navigate uh, to within a project here, the underwriting published. So as you can see, the two projects I had there was an underwriting ad hoc and, and published. So it's two types of underwriting reports. And within each, um, within each of these projects, I have various data sources. So I have a, a number of data sources here, um, different types, 
so a tabular model, other connections to analysis services, uh, databases, and an Excel spreadsheet. These data sources can be set as live, uh, as, as is displayed here with the analysis services connections, or they can be extracts refreshed on a schedule. Uh, one of the new features of Tableau, I think 9.3 server, is that you can quickly get a view of how many uh, ad hoc views have been built on top of each of your data connections. Um, so the next level is the workbook. The workbook, as I said, is a collection of, of individual dashboards. So I have a number of um, workbooks here, and I can get a quick view of the number of times that each workbook has been visited and the number of time it's uh, been favorited by users. And, and this one indicates that I have favorited it, in fact. Within that workbook, I can then see the different views. And again, I can get a quick view of um, the number of views and the number of favorites of each of the views. Uh, so kind of the number of hits on each. Um, and there's other functionality that will allow me to quickly navigate to a dashboard that I don't want to view. For example, uh, there's this search toolbar on the right. And I may know that I am an owner of certain dashboards that I'd like to navigate to. I can quickly search uh, for myself in that bar, and it'll find all the dashboards within that, um, that specific project that are relevant to me. But in today's, today's example, I'm a, a loss manager, so I'm going to look for my uh, loss dashboard. I can also utilize the search functionality at the bar at the top here, and I'll navigate to that loss dashboard. So as you can see here, um, this is kind of a view of a dashboard. It looks uh, quite similar to what you'd see in Tableau Desktop. However, you don't have the data elements on the left. Um, it, it's kind of a, a more simple, almost a read-only version of the dashboard relative to um, how users, uh, how it's displayed in Tableau Desktop. But I can interact with this dashboard. So for example, I'm a, I'm a European loss manager. So it would be useful for me to get a view of this dashboard uh, as it pertains to Europe specifically. And I can filter on this and save myself the effort of going back for it later and save a version for it. So I'll call this European losses. And I can either make it public or just save it for my own personal consumption later. So for right now, I'll just save it for myself. So you can kind of also interact and uh, utilize uh, filtering functionality using the dashboard itself. So uh, one of our built-in functionalities here is, is that this marine, that this chart here should filter um, the rest of the dashboard. So I can click on that bar and I will see it will update the dashboard accordingly um, so that I'm viewing marine, uh, everything filtered by marine. And I can utilize tabs within the workbook to scroll to the next, uh, to navigate to the next dashboard. This one I'm looking at now is the customer analysis dashboard. And as you can see, it also retains the filter I'd selected, so it's passed that, that parameter there between tabs within the workbook. So I have the ability to share this dashboard with other members of my team quickly via link. I can also download this workbook if I don't if I want to um, make changes to it. I can download it and start altering it locally within uh, Tableau Desktop. We also have the ability um, in uh, Tableau Server to comment. So I've attached a comment here. Comments can even include hyperlinks that would be a useful site for users to navigate to. Um, so I've included a website here that users can click on when viewing this uh, dashboard for more information on marine losses. Users can also quickly tag, add tags to their dashboard. So I'll add marine as a tag to this dashboard and save that tag. And then I can use that search functionality that I used earlier. And the next time I want to navigate to the dashboard, I can just simply search by the tag I added and it'll recognize the um, lost dashboard as containing that tag. So again, that was a uh, view of the kind of security personalization, collaboration, and the analysis available in Tableau Server at an enterprise level, while leveraging the power of Microsoft Data Platform to source the data. Now I'll pass it on to Ali, who will go into more detail about using Microsoft and Tableau front-end products. Thanks, Alistair. When working with customers, we often need to look at the different types of users who may have very different reporting and analysis needs. 
This diagram shows some of those needs. On the left, we have the executive consumers of the data who are interested in high-level reports, like dashboards or scorecards. As we move to the right, we could have more detailed, structured reports behind that data. Further along the spectrum, there is a need for more guided analysis and navigation. All the way to the right, we have predictive analytics where users can explore the data in an ad hoc manner. We find that organizations may employ many tools to fulfill the wide spectrum of user needs, and we've helped our clients in a large number of these areas. Before we jump into a demo, I wanted to touch on a few of the tools we'll showcase in the demo today. Like a carpenter has a hammer and a screwdriver in their tool belt, companies can choose to utilize different front-end technologies to fulfill different use cases. Excel front-end is great at enabling ad hoc data exploration, while Tableau Desktop can enable guided analytics and visualization dashboards. SQL Server Reporting Services is a Microsoft offering for pixel-perfect reports to fulfill structured reporting needs. To share and collaborate across an enterprise, Tableau Server can distribute Tableau dashboards, and SharePoint is a web portal with customization options. We'll now have a look at some different ways in which these Tableau and Microsoft technologies can be used together to gain the most out of each tool and cover different areas of the spectrum for reporting needs. In this demo, we'll cover three main topic areas. I'll show what I can build using Excel as a front-end BI tool for data exploration, and then I'll take a look at the same data set within Tableau Desktop to see some visualization options. Finally, I'll show a more robust environment that we've created using the combination of Tableau Server, SharePoint, and Reporting Services for a guided analytics experience. For this example, I'm an analyst at an insurance company. I'd like to explore a new data set recently released by my IT department. I will start with Excel and use the latest version of Microsoft Excel 2016. As Alistair mentioned, Excel can get a data from a variety of data sources and integrates particularly well with SQL Server Analysis Services. I have an existing connection to an SSAS cube here, which I can open up and show the fields on the right side of the screen. Note that this data is not stored locally. When I interact with the data, it will be firing queries back to my data platform within Microsoft Analysis Services. In fact, in Excel 2016, Microsoft have made significant query and cache improvements to improve performance when building a pivot table against an analysis services model. I'll start exploring this data by adding total premium and taking a look at this by insured over time. I'll add my fiscal calendar as well. I can, I can, and I can see that I'm very, very quickly able to create a pivot table looking at my insured premium over time. Within Excel, I'm, allowed, I'm able to add some slicers. For example, let's add a slicer for insurance broker. Slicers are specialized filters that allow selections to be applied to multiple pivot tables and charts in Excel. In addition, I'll add a slicer for an underwriter as well. Slicers are associative. For example, if I select Guy Gilbert Insurance Broker, the relevant underwriters will be highlighted at the top of this slicer. You can also see that my list of insured parties has been filtered to only show me my related ones to this broker. Within this pivot table, I have some of the same functionality you may be familiar with within a pivot table. For example, I am able to add some conditional formatting. For example, I'll add data bars to the grand total to give a visual indicator of the total premium. In addition, I can sort my insured descending by total premium. I can also add a sparkline chart. So if I highlight these four cells, 
I can insert a spark line. And by spreading this for all insured, I can get a visual indicator of the insured parties and their increase or decrease in premium over the last four years. In this example, I can see that Hewlett Packard and Johnson Controls have a large spike in 2012, where some of the other insured parties have a decrease. This is something I should investigate further and bring up during my me next meeting with my underwriters. I can see that with a few clicks, I am able to create a formatted table with some visual indicators in an Excel file on my desktop. As you may be familiar, I am also able to create charts and visualizations in Excel. In fact, Excel 2016 has added some new chart types such as sunburst and waterfall charts. However, I know that Tableau is great at creating visualizations. In my company, I have access to both Excel and Tableau. So I'll switch over to Tableau Desktop and connect to the same data set to create some visualizations. As Alistair note, noted, we're showcasing Tableau 10, the latest version of Tableau still under beta testing. I'll recreate a similar navigation that I did in Excel. So I'll drag total premium onto my columns and insure it onto my rows. I can, and I can see that Tableau defaults to showing me a bar chart with this data for total premium by insured. I can easily replace this. So for example, I'd also like to view this information by product group. I can add product group on top of insured and the bar graph continues to update. While I'm playing around with this data, I'm interested to see what visualizations Tableau may suggest. I can use the show me panel to see what visualizations might be useful for this data. In this example, I'd like to view a tree map where the size and green color of the block indicates the, the amount of total premium. I'd also like to view this by broker, so I can add bro insurance broker onto my rows. I can do a bit of formatting here to expand the width, as well as sort this broker descending by total premium. And I can get a quick visual view of my data by broker and product. Color is another cool feature within Tableau that is commonly used to provide additional analytic value. In this example, I'd like to use color to highlight the product categories. And by selecting first party I, in this legend, I can see that my top insurance brokers are engaging in, first part, in policies relating to first-party products. As a data analyst, I'm able to drag and drop fields to explore the data in this Tableau visualization. For additional analytics, I'll fast forward a few steps and show you a Tableau dashboard created on the same data set. I can see a block diagram similar to the one I built on the previous tab. In addition, we've added visualizations such as a bullet chart for uncollected premium by product type, total premium by year, as well as total premium by broker along the bottom here. Since other people within my team are interested in this information as well, we've deployed this dashboard to Tableau Server, the web portal for sharing dashboards, which Alistair demonstrated a bit earlier. In addition, my company uses SharePoint as a platform for sharing content and collaborating across teams and business units. SharePoint has a number of options for custom extensions and can be combined with technologies such as Tableau. In this example, I've used a web part to embed a link from Tableau server into SharePoint for a seamless user interface. You can see that this site includes documents library, and a chat pane for comments along the right side of the screen. And my Tableau desk dashboard is on the left. I noticed a specific comment from my colleague asking me to prepare content for my upcoming meeting with broker Chris Nord. I can use the embedded Tableau dashboard to analyze the premium and products related to this broker. I noticed that I can interact with this embedded dashboard with the same functionality shown on Tableau desk desktop, and server, shown in the earlier demos. In this example, I'll select Chris Nord in this bottom visualization, and I can see that more information about the insured appears, such as 
line of business. In preparation for my upcoming meeting, I'd really like to look at the policy details for this broker so I can understand the volume and landscape of the business. I'd like to share this with Chris Nord to use as a talking point during our meeting. In this Tableau dashboard, we've used an action to pass a filter selection from a, from a visual Tableau dashboard to a pixel perfect reporting services report. In this example, my selection on broker Chris Nord is applied to an SSRS report to, load, to load the relevant policies. As this report loads, I'll see that this report is more detailed and formatted in a manner for printing out. I can see that my selection for Chris Nord has been applied to this report. While the policy detail information isn't required for the high-level dashboard within Tableau, it's great that I'm able to pull up this information as required. Companies may have a number of reports in different technologies, so linking the reports and passing parameters between them can help shape the guided, anal guided analysis experience for the end user. And SharePoint is a great platform to use to facilitate this. Throughout the demonstration, we've used a number of tools for a variety of user needs. From a front-end perspective, we've showed three out of many tools that are available in the market. It's easy to get started connecting to data in Excel pivot tables and building some reports. Tableau Desktop can be added on top of structured data to allow end users to create compelling visualizations. Finally, reporting services can be used for refined pixel-perfect reports for printing and exporting. While we didn't have time to show Power BI during this event, Microsoft's newest offering is enhancing the reporting and visualization tools available in the BI market. We have an upcoming video series on our website with more information on Power BI. Within large organizations, Tableau Server and SharePoint can be used to create a cohesive reporting environment that facilitates sharing and collaboration. Tableau Server allows secure sharing and organization of Tableau visualizations and dashboard. SharePoint allows for a large amount of customization, allowing for the integration of multiple technologies such as Tableau and a seamless user interface. So that brings us to the, to the end of today's agenda, and I wanted to revisit some of the use, use cases we discussed at the beginning of this event. To summarize, We've showed a few scenarios where the combination of Microsoft and Tableau can provide great business value. First, Alistair showed how end user modeling in Power Pivot can be leveraged and visualized in Tableau Desktop. Then, he demonstrated the use of Tableau dashboards on top of SQL Server as an enterprise data platform that can be shared and viewed on Tableau Server. Finally, I showed the front-end visualization options and how Excel, SharePoint, Tableau, and reporting services can fulfill a wide variety of user needs. We hope you enjoyed this session and found it to be valuable. At Thoroughgood, we love talking about business intelligence and have a number of upcoming events that you may be interested in. There are local events in Philadelphia and New York, as well as some upcoming workshops in London, more virtual webcasts like this, and a lot of on-demand videos. More information is available on our website under the events heading. As consultants, we'd love the opportunity to work with you on some of your BI initiatives. I've listed a few services on the screen here that we provide, as well as some specific engagements that we've done. Please reach out to myself or Alistair if you have any questions about the content discussed in today's webcast or would like more information on these topics. Thanks everyone for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.